New England highway. The year, 1961. Betty and Barney Hill were returning from vacation to their New Hampshire home. When they spotted a bright light up ahead, this light approached them rapidly and got so close and so was so large as to force Barney to pull over to the side of the road. From their proximity, they could make out that the object was actually a disc with bright, multicolored lights and a bank of windows through which peered the silhouettes of beings. The hills could sense, rather than hear, a voice telling them to stay calm, stay where they are. The next thing they knew, dawn was breaking, and they were 35 miles south of their last location. They were scared, shaken, and confused, otherwise physically unharmed. The curious thing, though, they had no recollection of the seven hours that had elapsed since first seeing the light. <clears throat> In an effort to reconstruct the missing hours, they sought professional help from a psychohypnotist who helped them reconstruct those activities of the night. What emerged was an account of uh, a strange UFO a medical examination centering on the reproductive organs, and little gray men with large eyes and large heads who communicated telepathically. <laughs> the Hills thought it their civic duty to report their findings and these activities of the night to the authorities, so they <coughs> notified the U.S. Air Force. And the Air Force, after thoughtful consideration, determined that the Hills had not seen a UFO, Instead, they had simply misidentified the planet Jupiter. <laughs> we didn't know it then, but what the Hills had experienced was just the tip of the iceberg. Since the Hills' fateful night, there has been a dramatic increase in the number of reported alien abductions. The aliens apparently erase or scramble the memories of their victims. So we can't get a true account but from what we can piece together, we get a story of little gray men and forced medical examinations. Now, these abductions are not pleasant. In fact, research has told us that these experiences are traumatic at the level, and they experience the same level of trauma that a warrior might experience in combat. Harvard psychiatry professor John Mack has interviewed hundreds of alien abductees and he has determined that what these victims are experiencing is post-traumatic stress disorder. But we have to ask ourselves, how prevalent are alien abductions? After all, is it something we have to worry about or is it limited just to a few people in rural America? To help answer this question, Dr. Mack's co-researcher Robert Bigelow joined with multinational product research organization, the Rover organization, to help design a questionnaire. Together, they constructed a survey that, helped a, that was so designed as to eliminate any biases and had quality assurance measures so as to weed out aberrant or untruthful responses. <clears throat> the Rover organization administered this survey to 6,000 Americans from all walks of life from all ages and from all parts of America. Their findings were out of this world. <laughs> One in 50 people responded that they had symptoms similar to those of known alien at their feet. That's 2% of the American population. That's twice the number of alcoholics in our country. That's four times the number of asthmatics. Fellow Toastmasters, alien abduction is a public health threat <laughs> that rivals that of our most common chronic diseases. So what can we do about that? Do we just hide under the covers and hope that everything's okay? In my research, I have uncovered a way to, that we can protect ourselves from the threat of alien abduction. It involves constructing a thought screening device. One can create simply and easily a thought screen helmet like the one shown here. 
<laughs> one simply <laughs> gets an aviator's helmet or a similar hat, and into it can sew up to eight layers of Velostat. Velostat is a plastic lining developed by the 3M Corporation, impregnated with carbon black so as to render it conductive. When wearing this thought screening helmet, aliens cannot immobilize you. They cannot control you. They cannot communicate using their telepathy. And when aliens cannot control or communicate with humans, they leave them alone. Alien abductions have been occurring probably for many, many years. Our perception of, of the prevalence of this phenomenon has probably been masked because of the aliens, perchance, for scrambling our memories. We can, the alien intellect is much, much greater than that of our own. And we can no more understand why they spend so much effort and energy into abducting humans, any more than a cow can understand why a human leaves it to the feedlot. But we do know a few things. We know now how traumatic alien, alien abduction can be. We understand now how prevalent it is. But we know one other thing. We know how to protect ourselves from the threat of alien abduction using a cheap and simple tool, like a thought screening helmet. It's a small price to pay for a comfortable level of insurance. I now have time for one or two quick questions. Yes, sir. Does this social phenomenon only occurs in the US? I have never heard of this in India. <laughs> 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 and second, if you could take your tongue out of your cheek, why do so many people actually believe this? <laughs> I'll address your second question only. <laughs> we don't know for sure if this is true or not. What, what, is, what we do know is that people, researchers, legitimate researchers, have interviewed people who claim to have been abducted by aliens and walked away confused. They had the preconception that these are people who are wanting attention only. And as it turns out, they're just an average joke. They're people from all walks of life and include people that are highly respected in the community who would actually be jeopardized if they, if, if the public knew of their claim. But they come forward anyway. I think it's, personally, I think it's part of a collective memory that we all have perhaps seeing our, our parents looking in on us at the crib, seeing big eyes and focusing on that. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I'm <laughs> sorry, that, that's all the questions. Are they, um, you said we have one more question. Uh, one more question. Do they, uh, are they, have you, there, is there any information about them using flying saucers to get here? Well, how are they? Well, they tend to are not privy to any type of information, and we, the government probably has a lot of information can't get that from first-hand accounts of, of the victims of alien abduction. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for that.